welcome to uh, Greater St. Matthew <coughs> Sunday School. As you all know, we're still studying the series of Never Alone, and the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit in our life. <coughs> this morning lesson is walking with the Spirit. You know what it's, what it's saying, walking with the Spirit. Lesson will be taught by uh, Melvin Cox. He stepped out for a minute to get his uh, cell phone. But uh, yeah, he said, "What that? What do that mean? Walking on uh, with the Spirit? You know, for the last few Sundays we've been studying about the Holy Spirit, what it means to us, and at what point do we receive the Holy Spirit? Realize that the Holy Spirit." They guide us, they counsel us, they help us to make uh, godly decisions. And we also been studying how we can uh, also grieve the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit is trying to direct us in one path, we think that we know what's best for ourselves. And we decide to do what we think is best for ourselves and we end all we end up doing the wrong thing. So, these series of lessons have been very good as far as allowing us or, or showing us the responsibility of the Holy Spirit. So, this morning lesson, we're, going to, we're talking about walking with the Spirit and what that means. And that lesson will be brought again by Reverend Cox, he's a main back, so at this time, I'm going to yield the microphone to, to him and let him share with us what God has been ministering to him for the, for the week. So right, right now, I'll give the uh, floor to Reverend Cox. Shall we pray? Our Father, which art in heaven, thou who art the maker and the creator of each and every one of us who are gathered within the confines of these walls, who spoke to us early this morning, <laughs> and said, get up. And we thank you getting up. The son went to sleep last night and didn't awaken. But you saw fit to allow us to be upon your word one more time. We'll never see this day again, so we pray that you would allow us to take complete advantage of the opportunity that thou hast set forth. And Master, I thank you for this privilege I am not worthy to stand here, but because of grace and because of mercy, you saw fit that I would stand before your children one more time. And Master, if this is the last time, <laughs> no complaints, for you've been better to me and to my family and to all of us better than we ever could have been for ourselves. We pray that you would bless the pastor of this church, Reverend Ronnie. Pray, our Father, that you would heal his body of all infirmities. And we pray that when he comes back, he'll come back better than the addition that, that left us some time ago. And we pray for everyone who comes through the doors of not only this church, but every church across the land, that when we leave here, we'll be better. For we have had communion with the Son of God, and he has given us 
instruction for the next week. And we thank you, Lord, for all of your many wonderful blessings. And we would be remiss if we didn't say, Lord, please forgive us of our sins and of our transgressions. And we ask all of these blessings in the precious name of Jesus and for the sake for which he died on Calvary's cross. Let us all say amen. To the garden alone. While the dew, amen, Ross. While the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And then the refrain says, and he walks with me. Amen, Ross. And he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and the joy that we share while we're tearing there see I just will say amen none other has ever known song that the Lord gave me this morning I've been singing this one for the past five, six days. But then he says, walk with me, Lord. Yes, Lord. Walk with me. You know, there's an operative word in there, with. Walk with me, Lord. While I'm on this Christian journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. And then the second standard says, talk with me, Lord. Talk with me. Talk with me, Lord. Talk with me while I'm on this tedious journey. I want who? Jesus. To talk with me. Using that as a, as a backdrop, as a way of saying it. Our lesson says, walking with. Amen. The Spirit. Walking with the Spirit. If I got it right? Walking. So that means that not only are you moving in a direction, but you want something to accompany you as you walk. And what I found in my 70 years and seven months and what, five days, is that I can't do this by myself. Amen, Ross. That's the whole key. When I thought I could do it by myself, I stumbled and fell. I messed up. And not only did I mess up, but I didn't know how to clean up the mess. <laughs> that I had messed up, but we are walking with. At first, when I, when I first glanced at the, at the lesson, I, I, I don't know why, but I was saying walking in the Spirit. But it says walking with the Spirit. The problem that we have is that it's hard, amen, to walk with the Spirit. And the reason why it's hard is because we have this flesh that has a mind of its own. We got some scriptures that we're going to address this situation with. But so I will not be remiss, you know, 
I'm going to at least read our scriptures this morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to read our scriptures. I, Brother Bates being, you might say, uh, cognitive, cognitive, cognitive of the fact that sometimes I get so carried away that I forget what we're supposed to be covering. So this morning I'm going to do right. And I'm going to go by scripture so that I can bring in the other information for which the Lord has laid on my heart. Y'all excuse me, I have allergies real bad. And this is the morning and I can't take a sinus tablet because I stand up here and go to sleep. So y'all just bear with me. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. For the flesh lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that ye cannot do things that ye would. You can stop right here and, 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 and put, there's a war going on. Amen. If you, if you, if you wanted to preach this, you could, when you use the term contrary, that means opposition. There's a war going on on the inside of us. But if, which means there's a 50-50 chance, if <laughs> ye had been led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, hearsay. Just plain old evil. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, you notice how they said that. Now, he, he told us what we need to do, but then he, he put that magic word in front of number 25, and he says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another, being jealous of one another, talking about each other because we ain't got what they got, and, and getting mad when someone gets something new, and criticizing people for being who they are. Hearsay. This is the hardest part of the lesson because I have so much information. I don't know where to start first, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with this one. In the book of Proverbs, the third chapter and the fifth verse, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And do what? Lean not unto your own understanding. Now, that's, that's what Solomon said. He said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Then he cleans it up and he says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he meaning God, meaning Jesus, meaning the Holy Spirit, acting as one, and he shall direct 
that pay. In other words, when you trust in the Lord and you quit asking questions about why, 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 and when, 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 and trust him with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways you acknowledge him, he will allow you to fulfill verses 17, uh, let's see. Now, he, he, no, let's see where we start. He, he will uh, allow you to fulfill verse 22, 23, and, and part of 24. Amen. Now, why am I saying that? Because on your own, you can't do this. I, I mean, if there's one part to this lesson, walking with the Spirit, the first thing that has to be recognized is that you can't do it if the Lord does not help you to get there. On your best days, on your best days, you still do wrong. Amen, Moses. And see, let, let, let's make another. Let's use uh, Romans 3 and 23. What does Romans 3 and 23 say? For all have done what? And we have fallen short of the glory of God. So therefore, we already start in a deficit. And what we're doing now is trying to work our way out of the hole. See, we, we didn't ask for this. See, the scriptures tell us, and, and David hollered, and Jeremiah hollered, in sin was I conceived. I was conceived in sin. So before I, before, before I had my first breath, I was already guilty. I was already guilty. Not only was I guilty, I didn't even know what to do because my mind had not been shaped and, and you know, uh, uh, and how, let's use that script, let this man that in Christ Jesus do what? Be, I ain't had a chance for that right now. But what it came down to is that life had to teach me. I had to bump my head up against that brick wall a couple of few times. I had to go through some things and then something in me said try God and see try him try him try him and see what will happen that didn't mean that I didn't stop bumping my head against the wall but at least the Lord put a helmet on my head <laughs> yeah 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 because you know it, it, it sounded too good to be true trust in the Lord with all of your heart and don't lean to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him, he's going to tell you which way to go. So we, we, we leave there. We're still trying to work our way out of verse 17 where, where it says, let's see, how does it go here? Uh, but the, for the flesh lusts against the spirit. We're still trying to get into that place wherewith we will trust the Lord in all things. See, 2 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, In all things, give thanks unto God. For this is what? His will concerning you through Christ Jesus. Now, what that saying is that no matter what happens in this life, I'm supposed to do what? Thank the Lord. When the doctor told me I had cancer, what was I supposed to do? Thank the Lord. Now, that don't sound right, does it? Lord, you, you, you know I'm one of your children. I've confessed Jesus. I've done what, I've tried to do everything you asked me to do. And now I'm sitting up here and this man telling me I got cancer. Come on now. But in all things, we should give thanks. See, that's not relying on your what? Understanding. Your understanding will go get a fifth. Amen, Was Your understanding will go get a joint. Your understanding will go by her house. Your understanding will start doing those things. Well, I'm fitting to die. I may as well do some of them things. I'll, or y'all just will say amen that I've been intending to do. But now the Lord said that whatever happens in your life, Thank me for it. And why can't you thank the Lord for what's going on in your life? Because he ordained it. Huh? 
If you don't believe me, go to Romans 8 and 28. Y'all, y'all find that right quick. Let, let's read it. So, we'll, so, see, there's a key word that I want to throw in there. Uh, Romans 8 and 28 for, where am I? Oh, I need my glasses. <laughs> but, uh, eight, eight, uh, Romans 8 and 28. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And see, here's the next part that we really have to pay attention to. It says, we read 29, Sister Bike. For those he foreknew. Foreknew. See, he already knew. He, he see, al- when he formed, hold on, hold on. I'm going to let you read. Re- see, before he formed the foundations of the world, he knew. He knew. He knew it was going to be here this morning. He knew it was going to be in a car wreck last night. He knew it was going to get shot. He knew. He knows everything. And because he knows everything, the scripture says, and for whom he did foreknow. Okay, come on, Sister Wagner. For those he foreknew, he also predestined. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Not only did he know it, but he predestined. And what does predestined mean? In other words, you it, it was going to happen. It was going to happen. So therefore, when bad things come to you, you can say thank you because the Lord not only knew it was going to happen, he predestinated you for it to happen to you. And the reason why he wanted it to happen to you is because you knew that you could put your trust in the Lord. And because you put your trust in the Lord, what did Joseph say? Though he what? Slay me. Yet will I trust in him. See, we trying to get out of verse 17 in the fifth chapter where we're dealing with the flesh. But see, everything in us tells us it don't work like that. Okay, Sister Wagner, finish that scripture out for me. Those predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. What, 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 what is it like? When one of our brothers and sisters come up here and they tell somebody how they had cancer, how they had diabetes, how they had, 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 and say, I've been healed by the what? By the grace of God. There's something that happens on the inside that gives us hope. That if the Lord will bless Brother Bates, surely he'll do what? He'll bless me. And see, brothers and sisters, as we wrestle with the flesh, you know, a man once said that he had a a boxing match with the devil. He said the devil knocked him out. Then he went to the Lord and said, Lord, if you just give me a rematch. Oh, y'all just will say, (laughs) yeah, give me a rematch. Now, while we are over in the book of Romans, y'all keep your finger on that. We're going to look at how hard it is to deal with the flesh. The flesh ain't no, he ain't no easy rascal to fool with. Now, he ain't easy. He been doing this <laughs> ever since the Garden of Eden. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. You know, he's been making it hard for us to call on the name of the Lord. And see, brothers, here's where the problem is. Now, let's read the scripture. So you won't say this is something I made up. <laughs> is that all right? We're going to, let's see. Uh, let's see, where are we going to start? Seven. Let's see. Okay, let's start. Uh, now, let me read, because cause I'm going to be stopping. Now, this this is where the problem. I had to do it. I, 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 I slant myself. Seven and fourteen. As I said earlier, there's a war going on within us. Is that all right? There's a war. And the first thing about the rules of war is never underestimate your what? Never underestimate your enemy. Your flesh, my flesh. That's why when I was on my way over here, I 
I said, Lord, I ain't worthy to preach your word, to teach your word. I'm not worthy because I've sinned and I've fallen short. But I thank you for the privilege. Now, this is now I, I, I'm going to put my name. In. I don't know if y'all have to deal with this, but this is what I deal with every day. Fourteen. For we know that the law is spiritual, <laughs> but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. And what I ate, I better say that again. But that which I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that does what? Dwells in me. In other words, I was, I was born in sin and I was shaping into iniquity. So... All I can do now is try to purge uh, the sin that's in me so that the spirit can do what? Come in. You know, every day I go out to L.A. Fitness. Every morning I'm at, I'm at L.A. Fitness and I get on the treadmill and I walk uh, 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 two and a half miles. And then I leave, the, I leave the, 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 the treadmill and then I go down and I work on the weights for about an hour. And then after I finish the weights, I then I go to the swimming pool and I swim. And then for a reward, I get into a spa. Amen, walks. Now, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to keep the fat man. Oh, y'all just will say amen. See that? There's a fat man in here. And I go to the gym to get rid of the fat man so that the good man can do what? Can come out. All them years of eating bluebell and hamburgers and hot dogs and, oh, y'all just will say, man, Milky Ways and, pota and potato chips. I'm, I'm trying to purge my body of all of that good stuff so I can get some better stuff on the inside. I'm trying to raise my heart rate so that my heart will uh, uh, run better. I'm trying to keep the blood moving a little fast so that when it's called upon, it can react in a positive manner. In other words, we got to get rid of the old man so that the what? The new man can come in. Now, I, I already found that when I want to do something. Now, this is uh, uh, 17, 18. For I know that in me, see, you know, there's a key word for I know. You see, you got to be honest with yourself. You know, I know everybody in here wants to be holy and righteous and walk around flapping their wings all day. But at the same time, you got to know within yourself that there is no good thing in the flesh. There is nothing good about you. You see, the only reason that you ain't killed up a bunch of people is because grace didn't let you. Oh, I better say that all over again. You know, you can stick yourself up in righteous indignation and talk about, oh, oh, oh. Well, if it had not been for the grace of God. You could be homosexual. You could be that man that killed up them seven people the other day. That man that killed them 11 kids over there in Uvalde. There's nothing that you won't do except by the grace of God has kept you from it. That's why Paul said, for I know. Nobody has to tell me, for I know. That in me there is what? No good thing. Now, let's see what else he got to say. This is his testimony. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing for, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Now, if you notice, he used the term what? I. See, I can't do this. Oh, y'all just will say amen. I, 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 I've been trying a mighty long time. There's some things you've been trying to quit. I have been trying to quit. Well, did you pray about it? Did you ask the Lord about it for some help 
because you come to the realization, I can't do this by myself. And then he says, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, <laughs> that's what I wind up doing. <laughs> now, here we go. This is, we finna, we finna put on our track shoes now. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would, now this is what the old folks should say, when I seek to do good, evil is present on every hand. Every time you try to do something good, there's always a doubt. There's a, oh, you know you ain't, uh, you know, you hear that mess up in your head, and you have to deal with it and ask the Lord to give you what? The strength to do what he's asked you to do, not as you told you to do. I've been trying to Okay, now, 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And then I looked at it. And then I said to myself, oh, I ain't got a chance. Oh, Y'all just will say, man, you have, been, have you ever been in a situation where you just can't see your way through it? I know some of us in here, you know, except for LC, you know, you, 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 your bank account get a little low. You're trying to, fi <laughs> you're trying to figure out how you're going to keep the lights on, how you're going to keep the water on. And Lord knows, got to keep that cable and telephone be alone. Oh, y'all just were, <laughs> yeah, a day without telephone is, ooh, that's a rough day. But anyway, I find myself in a situation and a circumstance where I can't see my way out. And then Paul answers and he says, oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched man. Oh, wretched man. Oh, wretched man. Oh, man that can't figure out how he's going to get out of this mess. Yes, Lord. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with me, my mind, I serve the law of God, and with the flesh, the law of sin. So in other words, when we go back to Galatians, and we look at number five, let's see, where is it? Come on here. Thought I had it. Thought I had it. Mark. Oh, there it is. Let me remark it again. See, when we go back to Galatians 5, and then we look at verse number 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to the one, one to the other, so that it cannot do the things that you're supposed to do. Now, <laughs> when you go to 19, this is what you are subjected to. It says here, <laughs> now the works of the flesh are manifest in these. Now, this is what you are subjected to when you are walking with the flesh. Y'all got me now? See, you are trying to get out of it. Oh, yeah, can I say that again? There's something in you that's telling you don't do that, but the flesh is what? Just too great. That's why the man said, give me a rematch. The devil knocked me down, but give me a rematch. Let me try it again and see if I can do better. Now, when we go back over to Romans, we go on with number eight and one, and this is where we start cleaning up our act. It says here, there is therefore, now this is Romans eight and one, there is therefore now, July 10, 907. Y'all hear me? Therefore, there is what? Now, no more condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Can I say that again? We failed. We flunked. We got else. But the scripture says, God knows. He knows your struggle. He knows what you 
are not capable of doing. He knows that you failed and you, you missed the mark time after time after time again. But he's trying to get you ready now. And he's telling you that though your sins be as scarlet, oh, y'all just well say amen now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to the landing, to the landing approach. Though your sins be as scarlet, I shall make them what? White as snow. You see, a lot of us in here, we, we, we pink right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, we pink right now. We're not as bad as we used to be. But we're not as good as we what? We want to be. We 50-50. But every day, just like I go to the gym every day, I don't, I don't look like uh, the Incredible Hulk after I leave the gym. Oh, but if I just keep going every day, if I just keep walking two miles every day, burning this fat, if I keep lifting those weights, tone those, oh, y'all just well say man, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy, tone those muscles. If I just keep what? If I just keep walking. Oh, you just will say amen. See, the problem is if the devil wants you to stop. Amen, Walsh. When Nehemiah, y'all just will say amen. When Nehemiah was building the wall for the Lord, they came and they, they said, hey, come down and talk with us. Nehemiah said, I ain't got time. I got to do what? I got to build this wall. All we're saying is the devil, the devil knows you're trying to do the best you can, but he won't. Oh, you. Hey, come down for a second. Let me talk to you. Let me let me get your mind off of what you're trying to do. See the scriptures and the song says, "They to keep their mind stayed on Jesus, the Lord will keep you what in perfect peace." And seeing the devil does all he can, he sends a, a flat tire, <laughs> oh, a battery. Yeah, somebody, somebody, threw the dog pooping in your yard. Whatever it takes, whatever, whatever it takes to take your mind off the Lord, that's what the Lord, that's what the devil is after this morning. You see, there's somebody that came here this morning on fire. Oh, you just will say, man, put your angel wings on, flapped it real good, and the velocity was mighty high. Oh, but somebody parked too close to your car. Oh, you just well say amen. Somebody greeted you in a manner that you didn't think was Christian-like. And the next thing you know, that fire has come down to a what? To a trickle. You see, brothers and sisters, there's a war going on. And not only is there a war going on, we must recognize that the devil is after your soul. Or can I say that again? He is after your soul. He will do whatever it takes to get you to renounce. That's all he's trying to do here. You know, what did Job's wife tell Job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We done lost our kids. We done lost our bank account. The stock market is already falling out. And everything we got... We done lost. Curse God. Oh, y'all just will say amen. Curse him and do what? And die. She thought that if he would tell the Lord, give the Lord a piece of his mind, it would make things all right. No. Job had the correct response. I don't know how he said it, but he said, they, yeah, though he would slay me, I would do what? I'm going to trust in him. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Ain't nothing in Job could understand why his kids had to die. He prayed for them every day. He, he offered sacrifices just in case they forgot. He did everything by the book. Oh, y'all just well say amen. You see, though, some of the worst Christians turn out to be those that start having hard times. And they've been, they've been, oh man, they've been, they've been the chief cheerleader at the Greater St. Matthew. Oh, but when trouble came, they forgot. They thought that all of their good deeds was.
was enough to keep trouble from coming by their house. Well, just like with Job, when the devil showed up with the sons of God, the Lord says, has thou considered, Sister Wagner, oh, y'all just will say amen. Right, let me get back to the, to the microphone. Has thou considered L.C. Diane, Brother Thompson, Brother Nunn, Brother Bates, uh, uh, Sister Diane, I'm, 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 I'm running out of names, Eddie and Nader and Cheryl, oh yeah, and, and Eva and, and Michael and whoever's back there. Has thou considered? Has thou considered? Have you considered? And, <laughs> and the devil said, yeah. Trying to get after him a long time. But every time I <laughs> would get after him, they called on you. And you'd show up and fix it. I, I better say that all over again. Every time they call on you, you show up and fix it. But I tell you what, turn your head one minute and I'll show you. You see, brothers and sisters, we have to recognize that the devil is after us. The devil don't like seeing you here at this church. Oh, y'all come on here. He does not like it. So what does he do? He put obstacles in your way. He used COVID to keep us out of the church. I better go back to the word of God. Uh, the last time I checked, the Lord had power over COVID. Oh, yeah. I ain't going down there. You go to Walmart. You go to H-E-B. You go to Joe B's. You go everywhere, but no, nah, I can't go down to the church house. Well, the same God that's over at Joe B's. Oh, y'all just will say amen. He's the same God that's at 14919 South Main. You know, I heard a preacher say, I didn't open the doors of the church, and I sure can't close them. In other words, I trust the Lord. See, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just said trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not. See, we let COVID run us away from the church and now we used to watching it on TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fix our breakfast and watch Rep. Ronnie. Oh, I'm just, oh, y'all just well say amen. And, and, and what does the scripture say? Forsake not yourself for the assembling of coming together. Y'all was glad when they saw you. I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go. If the same Lord that can protect you at home is the same Lord that's going to take. There's a church that I know of. They never did close their doors. And they have yet to have one case of COVID. Oh, yeah. No, nah, but we scared. We scared. We put our masks on and we do this. And, well, if the Lord don't protect you, you can put on one of them one of them hazardous suits. What, what they call it? Is that what they call it? Huh? Hazmat, yeah. And put the put the put the thing on your head that got the little. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? See that people that didn't come to church today. Scared of COVID. Scared. Scared. As Reverend Booker, you say scourged. Y'all remember that? Now, please, if you would, see how much. Oh, I got 13 minutes. Let's go to a familiar verse. And then I'm going to try to. Bring it home. Psalms 
Psalms 23. 23 Psalms. Probably the most familiar verse in all the Bible. Now, how are we going to connect Psalms 23 with Galatians 5? 16 through 26. The Lord had told me we, we, we were dealing with the Beatitudes for a while. He said, you ain't got no time for that. <laughs> so he gave me Psalms 23. The Lord is. I don't even have to go no further. The Lord, what? Is. And is is a present tense verb. Not after a while. Not in the past. But when? J July 10. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, which means that if he's my shepherd, I must be the what? And the one thing about sheep is they do not have no defense system. Oh, I bet, let me say that again. <laughs> they don't have a defense system. Dogs, any, 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 anybody can whip a sheep. I better say that again. Anything can whip a sheep. So the sheep has recognized that it needed somebody to do what? Thank you. See, I need, I need the Lord to look after me because in me, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to help y'all now. I need the Lord to look after me because in me, there is what? No good thing. Everything that is said over in the scriptures about lasciviousness, adultery, fornication, lying, hearsays, envy, and strife, is in him. So I need a shepherd that when I seek to do good, he will turn that other part instead of evil being present. He will be present. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't want his job. I better say that all over again. See, some of us want God's job. We No. No, I don't want his job. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. Now, now, if you notice, a green pastor. What's it, what, what's what's it, what, what can we use for a green pastor? And 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 still water. See, the reason why the water had to be still for the sheep is because if they got too far in the water, their wool would absorb all the water, and it get so heavy that they couldn't move, and eventually would drown. Oh, yeah, see, y'all didn't hear. Well, I ain't got time for that, but yeah, I, I, I hope you hear me. See, even something as minute as water could bring me down. You see, the reason why you say your blessing before you eat, you could choke and die eating a quarter pounder. I miss Mary. In other words, I don't take for granted nothing. I could strangle and drown myself drinking a, gra a glass of water. He leadeth me beside the green pastures, and he puts me beside the still water. Now, let me hear you up so I can get to my place. Uh, he restores my soul when I mess up. He forgives me. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. For the sake of Jesus, in all thy ways, are y'all uh, in all thy ways acknowledge him 
and he shall direct your path. Can I say it all over again? In all thy ways acknowledge him. And it just says right here, he leadeth me in the path of what? Of righteousness. In other words, he leads me to love. He leads me to peace. He leads me to grace. All the fruits of the spirit, that's where he leads me to if I let him. Uh-oh, see, y'all got quiet on me. Okay, now we finna start bringing it home. Yay! Though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. See, 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 a shepherd had either a rod or a staff. Now the rod was to slap a wolf upside the head. That was the whipper. The staff had a curve on the end of it. Y'all didn't hear me, did you? It had a curve on the end of it. So that when he saw one of the sheep getting out of hand, he wouldn't use the rod on him, he would use the staff. And he would put his staff down and hook him and bring him back in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Am I making sense now? You see, sometimes the Lord does have to use a rod on us. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does. The old folks say the Lord will whip you. Well, he, <laughs> he may not whip you, but, boy, he got some way that the show light up your backside. Amen, Walt. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, here we go. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. You see, we can't make it out here. I'm just trying to tell you. We can't make it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, see, see, it ain't but one place. See, if you go in, in Psalm 27, it says, hide me. Hide me in your pavilion. Hide me in your tabernacle. And he just said, I will dwell in the what? In the house of the Lord forever. In other words, the only place that I'm safe, the only place that I can practice, go back to go back to go back to go back to Galatians. The only place that I can practice the fruits, the only place that I can carry out what the Lord would have me to do. He said, but the fruits of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith, uh, temperance against us. There is no law. You see, the only place I can practice that is in his pavilion, in his tabernacle. In other words, I got to be with the Lord. Because Cox out there by himself, he's going to be in the first group. Boy, but if I just turn myself over to the Lord and start to say, Lord, without you, I am what? I am nothing. And when the truth of that comes home to me, and I quit trying to act like I'm all that in a bag of chips, then the Lord can do what? Put the cocoon of protection around me. And you notice it, say, it says grace and mercy shall follow me. You see, we're walking with the Spirit. And when we are walking with the Spirit, that means that the Spirit accompanies you everywhere you go. The Spirit goes. And just in case you get a little weak, just in case you get a little, get a little, get a little weak need. And then he says, grace and mercy. Oh, yeah. Wow. Grace and mercy do what? They got my back. Oh, yeah. Oh, my brothers and sisters, if you could just see it like it is. In other words, no weapon. 
Oh, y'all just will say amen. No weapon formed against you shall what? Shall pro Why? Because all that the Spirit don't get while I'm walking, grace and mercy got my back. Oh, y'all just will say amen. Let me close. Let me close. Let me close. Oh, I got two minutes to tell this. A few weeks ago, I was walking. That's before I got the, the membership. The Lord gave me a free membership. Oh, y'all just want to say amen. See, he said, for what the law could not do. See, I didn't have the money to join. <laughs> Been wanting to go for years, but didn't have the money. So the Lord told the insurance company, pay the bill. Oh, y'all just want to say amen. Give thanks. Amen, Well, Give anyway. I was walking, and I was had my little had my little praise going on, and all of a sudden the wind blew. It wasn't just the wind that I feel every day. It was a difference in this one, and I stopped. <laughs> now this is my vernacular. Lord uh, say hello there. How's it going? Good. Did you feel me? Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. And then he said, Have you ever asked yourself, how am I able to be with you and be with Sister Wagner and Bates and Eddie and Cheryl and, and, and everybody at Greater St. Matthews at the same time. He said, did you feel me? I said, yeah, but I didn't see you, but I felt you. He said, I, didn't, I, I might have to walk three or four times. Brother Bates, I'm going, I'm going, I promise you, I will, I, by 8.32, I'll be through. I mean, yeah, nine thirty. I'm sorry, who that all went fast? <laughs> all of these years, forty nine years and ten months, I've been preaching. In two weeks, I will celebrate fifty years. Amen. Praise the Lord. Fifty years. Fourth Sunday in July, I preached my first message. No, I, I don't do that. No, no, no applause. <laughs> the Lord said, have you ever wondered how I can be with you and give you a blessing? And at the same time, I'm blessing you. I'm blessing L.C. Can anything stop the wind? Can anything make the wind stop blowing? What is the one thing that I've given you that's in abundance? Air. Oh, y'all just want to say amen. He gave us air. And all I'm trying to say in it, and, 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 and I, hope, I hope everybody catches this. Walk. With the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. There is no place you can go that the Spirit is not already there. I can, I can come here, David, as the old preacher would say, come here, David. David said, I went to the bottommost part of the sea. Oh, somebody going to get it in a second. And you was there. I went as far east as I could go. And you was there. I went as far west as I can go. And you was there. I went as high as I could go. And you could get he was there. Where can I go but unto the Lord? So to clap off this lesson, you don't have to worry about where the spirit is. Or you just will say amen. You don't have to worry if he's going to show up. He's already there. 
he got there before you got there. And not only did he get there before you got there, he's got whatever you need already there when you get there. So all I'm saying this morning is that when you walk with the Spirit, all you're saying is, I'm trusting in the Lord with all of my heart, and I'm going to stop leaning on my understanding. And because I trust in the Lord in all my ways, I'm acknowledging him. And everywhere I go, the Spirit is always going to be what? With me. See, see, that's why, that's why I said and. And that's, why, that's why I read the 23rd Psalms. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, thou art what? With. See, that's the opposite word. There's no place you can go that he's not with you. I don't care if you find yourself in a prostitute's house. He's what? With you. If you start cussing, he's with you. If you start shouting, he's with you. There's nothing you can do that the Lord is not what? With. 